Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Uh, typical uh, starting off here of Wilbur just standing there menacingly looking at Adira, wanting to talk, but not having the courage to do so. Cute. Not creepy. Cute. Anyway, uh, yeah, last time we talked to Jay, we finally found out her whole deal. Very interested to see what she can bring to the table going forward. Uh, the time after that, or by the time before that, I don't know where he is, but Pascal's over here somewhere. We talked to him. We found out all about his uh, backstory and bullshit. And now it's time for Adira. Let's see what Adira has to say to us, you know? When Adira sees you, her lips curve into a smile and she nods at you nods at something over your shoulder. Ugh. Okay, well, I guess we... I want you to lose the ship. Uh, um, what kind of gift could I give Jay, do you think? <laughs> well, it would have to be something that screams. Look how much the rogue trader loves me in the faces of everyone she meets. Like a fabulous gown beyond anything that even the noble women of Dargonis can acquire. A princess of smugglers would love the opportunity to rub the nobility's noses in her newfound privileges. Okay. Uh, little caddy there. I like it. <laughs> uh, didn't realize that they had such a uh, hostile relationship, but that makes sense. And I guess you have nothing to tell me. Of course. Always at your service. Whenever you need me. Very cool. Okay, moving on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you saucy minx. Uh, anything over here? I don't think so. Should we talk to Abel? Huh. The person you saved from the Electro Priest Monastery, the servant of the Omnissiah who calls himself Abel, <laughs> is staring intently at a cogitator. I remember that one. Uh, vid screen. Uh, wires connect the sacred computer machine to augments inside the prairie fully oh prayerfully bowed bowed head of murmuring servitor oh these guys okay <clears throat> abel looks up at you after a lengthy silence he looks away and says stiffly the omnissiah knows all comprehends all what job did on uh now how are you feeling tech priest stares intently at his feet. <clears throat> Sorry, goddamn, something in my throat. Some cock. <clears throat> uh, so <laughs> at his feet for a while, and then says in a halting voice, "The running of the binaric protocols was bogged down and dissolved when in false commands. The filter has separated the correct signals from the incorrect." The running has been restored to its swiftness. Don't know what any of that fucking means. Thank you. Have a good day. Pascal speaks softly as though trying to match the inflictions of Abel's voice. Tech brother Abel has passed the diagnostics. <coughs> Jesus. The pernicious influence of sacrilegious procedures has been completely eliminated. Statistically, most survivors of the uh, schismaticals infect infestation are left with severe cognitive impairments. However, tech brother Abel's mind, being as a less typical nature, has not been damaged to a great degree. Interesting. Gaze into Abel's eyes lovingly. Tech brother Abel, are you free from possession, are you not? I can trust you pose no threat to my ship. Abel's voice quivers and his eyes dart around, desperately avoiding eye contact. What was flawed has since been purged, but the shadows of the hunt linger. The cog is dismounted and no judgment has been made. In the absence of judgment, threat remains. Who will make the judgment? I will. Pascal places his mandarite. Uh, Macanderite? I don't know. Uh, on Abel's shoulder and repeats 
his voice heavy like a wheel tread crushing the dirt underneath. I will make the judgment that will avert the threat. His gaze falls on you. There is no need to frighten him. Fair enough. What troubles him so? What judgment do you two speak of? Why are you so concerned about him? He is not... <laughs> he is not the one you were hoping to find. You care for him as tr if truly he were your younger brother. I will not try to scare... Uh, to give Abel any undue cause for dread. You're like a brother to him. Pascal's voice rasps a tired laugh. Tech brother Abel is harmonious and harmony is beauty. It is so strange an urge to protect beauty from the horrors of the grotesque. What troubles him? I assume that first, uh, I assumed at first that this was caused by the shock inflicted upon his systems by the schematical attack but my tech brother's words are a sign of a deeper reason for his unease he foresees something something that threatens both him and all those around him and thus i stand ready to face the threat okay what judgment do you guys talk about only he knows but if my tech brother fears he that he might not make the right decision at a critical moment then i will do it for him why are you so concerned about him? He's not even the one you were looking for. Answer unknown. I am registering a kinship both between our identifiers and one that is more profound. Archmajos Amaranth uh, left an imprint on all his students. It may be then that I see some of my mentor in the Tech Brother Abel. And so my spirit rejoices and strives to keep him from harm. I won't do anything to cause him any more trouble. Thank you. Uh, why do you and Pascal have the same name? Abel freezes from his voice. Vox synth, barely audible through static, comes the words. The naming of the names is not an index to the text. The naming of the names is the text. I have no fucking clue what he's talking about, brother. Nah, um... <clears throat> Abel's answers can be... enigmatic. His mind works differently from ours. He thinks in harmonic imagery... What the fuck? And notices the sym symmetries and uh, proportional <laughs> relationships of the world around him. Poetry would be the closest analog to how he perceives and interacts with reality. Uh, I never imagined there could be poets among the text priests. Pascal, do you understand what Abel was referring to? Soften your tone. Abel, could you please explain what that means? Uh, are we overthinking it? It doesn't matter why your names are the same. What matters is that they are the same. Is that what you mean? Let's move on from this. Uh, didn't know there could be poets among the tech priests. Pascal will look surprised. Why not? Techna Laguna is rhythmically and possesses a board semantic scope, a broad semantic scope. Uh, and some of its more sonorous dialects lend themselves well to individual and symphonic declamation. Fucking speak English, dude. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna soften my tone and ask him to explain. He relaxes a little. His gaze drifts side by side, but there is silence. Are we overthinking it? Is that what you're saying? Abel looks sideways at you, and once he's transfixed stupor, he is gone. At this point in time, the cycle has been broken and reshaped into rising into a rising spiral, as Amarin envisioned. Hearing his old mentor's name, pa 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 Pascal, uh, <laughs> lets out a raspy, static-filled sigh. They are connected. My hypothesis regarding Abel's connection to the Bless Amaranth uh, has been confirmed. And what are you working on? 
We catch the soul of the light in the solar wind. We look for the footsteps of the Omnissiah left uh, when he walked the desert. This is the... <laughs> this is the fucking whatever, whatever. One Ramanek computation procedure? The depersonalized minds of these machine servants are a data dream, processing enormous arrays of assorted data and agitating them. Aggregating them, sorry. Uh, virtually all results of such synthetic synthesis are scrap data, but occasionally we have noticed coincidences whose exactness defies logic. It is an extremely rare and venerated form of statistical augury. But Tech Brother Abel is, a, 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 is adept at this form of appealing to the Demus Mechanicus. Is there a what option? Why do you do it? Inspect the sacred machine. Look for logical connections within the data points. Let's see. This is that's good. That's also good. Take a closer look at the vid screen to check for anything unusual. Uh, do we want logic or perception? Let's go with logic since Pascal's here. Succeeded. Most of the runes are devoid of any meaning, but you notice a few among them that combine into formulae and computational graphs. Abel peers at you inquisitively, then shifts his gaze to the vid screen, and you can swear that a smile lights up under his face where his repository respiratory augment but a crystal is exquisite in clear water divination from the circles trajectory or cycles trajectory has been increased with what as was amaranth's wish it lowers his head and his vox synthesizer broadcasts a binary cam uh you do not recall having heard before it sounds it, its sound is full of vibrant energy and his precise rhythm is nothing short of pleasing to the ear a rare thing for the language of the adeptus mechanicus pascal explains with an inexplicable air of pride tech brother abel was dedicated a lesser area to you the piece is distinguished by high, a high degree of acoustic harmony and it f and is fit for use as a model, auxiliary identifier, or epitaph. Wow, thank you! With a life as eventual, eventual as mine, I certainly going to need an epitaph at some point. Uh, no, I'm going to tell him thank you for the generous gift. The gift is disproportionate. But it does signify a personal affinity. My interest in the subject has exhausted. Inspect the machine. The hair has been removed from the servitor's head. Their bulky cerebral augments cover their skulls like helmets. Their, the faces of the cogitator's servants are blank. Their eyes are closed. Their lips are incessantly whispering uh, what sounds like gibberish. <laughs> Damn it. I'm gone. Hundreds of lines of symbols containing information scroll down the cog cogitator's vid screen. Abel Habibi appears at it with <laughs> voracious, voracious interest in sharp contrast to his usual usual lattice why do you do it it is how we execute the quest for knowledge and hope that the machine god grants us an epiphany so that we may concern discern a logical connection in a mass of absurd data which will propel our comprehension forward. Well, I'm bored of this. Abel goes back to intently watching the calculations, his eyes alight with curiosity. Turn to Pascal. Did you hear what Abel said? It seems like we... It seems we have... 
contributed to Armoran's design and deviated from the cycle. What does this mean for you? A low guttural sound rises from the depths of Pascal's voice scent, Vox scent, as though the planet's tectonic plates are shifting or crush and crushing each other. The mighty rumble brings forth words imbued with power. We follow a path charted by a great mind, but that path leads to dark places. Holy shit. Okay. The cycle has been has the advantage of predictability. Abandoning it will plunge the collective into a perilous space of uncertainty, which will inevitably lead to disastrous and the disasters and the risk of universal annihilation. The doctrine of discontinuing the cycle may herald good things to come, or it may be a death sentence. Only the Omniscient knows all uh, and comprehends all. Others are mere prophets who interpret his wisdom as far as their own comprehension permits. Okay, let's see here. Is it not the promise of every... Is that not the promise of every heresy? Let's renounce our path, distort our doctrine, and head out towards what looks to be a better future, but actually only has danger and grief in store for us. As flawed as the status quo is, it has helped us survive past 10 millennia. Therefore, it is effective. It is better to meet a, the challenge of change and perish in failure than to rot alive. Disaster is just another word for opportunity, not missing. Not missing it is what it's all about. I am no prophet. I will not presume to make pronouncements on the future. Um, uh, I'm no prophet. I'm not going <laughs> to, uh, no one knows the future. Every analysis has its margin of error and horrors lurk in these margins. The tone of thundering profanity, profundity <laughs> drains from pa Pascal's vox, giving way to his familiar sibilance. I must take my leave. Abel immediately looks away as he is lost all interest in you, but then his voice crackles, barely audible. I am glad to see you. Aww, very cute. Thank you, Abel. Okay, let's see what else is on our objective here. Just idiots. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. None of these guys. Voidsman in arms. Who are you? Bridge officer, bridge officer. Got the map there. Who is this? Jocasta Sourback? I do not recognize you. But you have a portrait. Jocasta Sourback is, uh, is the very picture of discipline. Her uniform is exquisitely pressed, her armor is polished, and her posture is imposing and rigid. The only flaw in her immaculate appearance is the heavy enforcer's maw, which is worn and battered from frequent use. She salutes you with a practice motion. Greetings, Lord Captain. Okay. How did you come to serve on my flagship? I come from the noble Sourback House family uh, of the capital world of Dargonis. I dare say that our house is re is renowned for its loyalty and strict adherence to the law. And the members of my family have been your faithful enforcers for centuries. I am honored to be the sixth master at arms named Sourback to serve on this ship. Jocasta, uh, or uh, Jocasta, uh, speaks the words with unmistakable pride. Why are you here instead of basking in the luxuries on Dur- Dur- uh, because of my cousin, uh, Marcharius, or Macharius, a furious crease appears between her brows. I cannot stand him, but the feeling is mutual. We can hardly be in the same room together, so I jumped the opportunity uh, to become your enforcer. 
I should thank my obnoxious cousin for nudging me towards the best decision of my life. I serve you with all my heart and wish for no other fate than this one. You are wearing an Imperial Navy armor. How did you come by it? I inherited it from the previous master at arms, like uh, the esteemed Seneschal. He left the Navy to serve Lady Theodora. He brought quite a few officers with him and established a tradition. Upon the death or resignation of an officer, his or her armor will be passed on to a fellow officer who has distinguished themselves in the course of their duties. I was awarded the armor in this way in my time, and upon the death of my predecessor, I inherited his personal armor. That's a cool tradition. What's your opinion of, of me as Lord Captain? That's stupid. He's just gonna fucking suck my asshole. Uh, I would not dare form opinions about you, your lordship. That would be an unforgivably brazen of me. My duty is to serve, not to evaluate. I want to know what you think about the other officers. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. I do not trust them, but I do not trust anyone. Mistress Toliman has too much power. Is that Adira? Has too much power and will surely be tempted to start deciding for herself what information to share when the, with the crew on your behalf and what to withhold. Raver is closely intertwined with the ship systems, which opens up plenty of opportunities for sabotage. She must be watched. Is that Pascal? I, he's using everybody's last names. I don't know last names, bro. Or she. She's using everybody's last names. As for Danrock, forgive me, but a man of his size and habits cannot help but steal. The hell does that mean? Can you tell me about more about Abelard? The Seneschal is a model of uh, competence and feel fidelity and all the officers and enforcers look up to him with gratitude a grimace of fierce devotion takes hold of sourback's face before she abruptly grits her teeth and continues it is all the more distressing to see that the years have not been kind to the deeply respected mr where sir Ian. <laughs> again last names uh soon there will be no rejuvenated treatment that can save him from the mistakes inherited in such an advanced age. But we are ever watchful and we will be there to study the trembling hand of our of the honored veteran if need be. That's crazy. You're saying he's too old? Thanks for dispatching such attentive guards to my bath chambers. Taking a bath th with them was entertaining. <sighs> Oh, that's going to get him in trouble. I ain't doing that. That is a stupid move. Uh, I want to know more about your service. That is all for now. I want to know more about your service. I am ready to answer any questions, Lord Captain. What is the man at Master at Arms duties? I'm responsible for upholding safety and order aboard the ship. Guard duties, patrols, finding and punishing troublemakers. In addition, my enforcers ensure that the crew follow all directives and carry out their tasks properly. As they say in my family, a servant who shows disobedience today prepares a riot tomorrow. Uh, there are thousands of people aboard this vessel. How do you maintain order? Two words, Lord Captain. Suppression and fear. The base nature of the rabble cries for an iron grip, lest they give it lest they give in to their animal urges. We have many well-tested measures to prevent it. Random night searches, pre preventative interrogations, corporal punishment, and executions. Of course, the laws of the ship equally apply to the officers. We eradicate the canker of insubordination wherever we find it without mercy. I hope you will not repeat the mistakes of the previous master at arms. You can be sure of that. I was a fine enforcer, but suffered a lot of... Suffered from the fatal flaw of trusting his associates. 
Oh, he was a fine enforcer, but trusted his associates. I myself lack the weakness and trust no one expected. No one except you, Lord Captain. Let's change the subject. That's all for now. Proud to serve the dynasty. Very cool. Interesting. Oh, IH630. Do you have anything to say? No, you're just chilling. Turn on. Ah, oh, there we go. Now I can talk to him. The reflections of the bridge lights are playing on an unlit vid screen of the cogitator. Next to the machine stands a hunched tech priest who bows as you approach, his body nearly folding in half. <laughs> Lord Captain, the machine spirit of this machine slumbers. Should you wish to awaken it, use the key of your blood. Uh, who are you and what is your purpose here? What is this blood key I'm supposed to use? Who are you? I am designate. My designation is IH630. Tech Priest points his only... I'm just going to say it. Mechorandite, I guess. I don't know. Uh, at the machine beside him, the venerated Ancient Seer Prime has entrusted this sacred mechanism to my care. Uh, it is now my duty to assist in the rogue trader's understanding of the hollowed code. Let's place our hand in there, shall we? Servitor's powerful jaws clo close. <clears throat> oh my god. Close around your hand with a, a screeching clack. You can feel cold metal pierce your skin and draw blood. The vid screen in front of you flickers restlessly, filling the numerical combinations. Let me see here. The text priest by the cogitator nods curtly. The sacred machine is awake and ready to receive your request, Lord Captain. Pascal has informed me that the system has encrypted data stored inside. I wish to know its contents. Have the tech priest of the Adeptus Mechanicus been able to discern how the ship was able to start her warp engine? Remind me who you are. Uh, let's talk about the Pascal thing. Without another word, the tech priest turns to the cogitator. He raises his hands and a prayer of binary code pours out from his Vox device. The servo motors uh, in the bowels of the machine grow louder and un dulting hum responding to his chant. Numerical combinations run down the screen. Oh, OK, cool. This is exactly what I was looking for. Scanning, blah, 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 blah. Mm, blah, 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 cool. The machine spirit has discovered numeric, numerous critical errors. The data is damaged. The tech priest stops abruptly and the green glow of his visor narrows. Registering an intact segment, the machine spirit has spoken. The worlds of Kiva, Gamma, and Darugas hold certain data repositories. The mechanism is ready to provide the rogue trader with data keys that can unlock said repositories. What data repositories? That remains hidden. The encrypted data bank belonged to the esteemed Theodore von Valencia. She, um, Valencius, sorry. Uh, she was the only one who could have known about these repositories. Perhaps the former Engineer Prime also could have known Omnisaya except his code. <laughs> That's such a funny way of say, saying bless you. <clears throat> if I were to propose a hypothesis, it would be most prudent to figure as imminent as a rogue trader to store her classified data in receptacles most secure. How do I accept these keys? <laughs> the gracious machine spirit is willing to transfer the data keys to the head of the House Valencius, Von Valencius, by means of elect two, elect two, a hypodermic tattoo augment. augment. You are ready to accept the keys. Place your hand inside the servitor's mouth. Deep within the servitor's dark gullet, unseen, burning hot needle pierces your wrist, but the sharp pain lasts only a moment. The elect two ha that had been planted inside your wrist should be enough to open the repository doors. 
I need to know more about the caches. Oh, here we go. 30? Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Tech Priest Augment uh, fingers dart around the control panel. The Omnissiah favors you. The Machine Spirit is willing to commence the calculation procedure that could restore the lost data. Um, I think we go here because this is our capital city, right? Kiva Gamma is the one. I think Kiva Gamma is the the one with all the materials and everything. I could have that reversed, but let's just try both of them here. Uh, hums loudly until it lets out a resounding crackle. Then the sound stops and the unmoving numerical combination lights up bright on the screen. The tech priest synthesized voice sounds almost concerned. The data has been restored, but it is only a single phrase. Litany, litanies of the motive force. That is all the sacred me mechanism was able to salvage. Okay, odd. I'm interested in the cash on Kiva, whatever. Several motors within the cog cogitator pick up the pace. Their heavy thrum growing louder. The machine clicks abrasively for several minutes until eventually the numeric code appears on the screen. The tech priest turns to you. Blessed are the Omnissiah's deeds. The repository on Kiva Gamma has a security system guarding it. The machine spirit has recovered a code that will allow you to disable the defenses. I have other questions. He bows. Uh, were they able to understand why we were able to start our warp drives? Interesting. Prime spends hours pursuing the quest of knowledge in hopes of comprehending the nature of said miracle. Uh, may the Omnisaya's grace guide him in his journey. Remind me who you are again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's leave. Okay, cool. So that was a quest thing. And now we have some quests to do on those other planets as well. There's Heinrich. I think we're going to talk to Heinrich next. Uh, do you have anything to uh, new to say? You shall make the arrangements. I don't want to replace the portrait. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very cool. So I do have Heinrichs here, which is going to be our next episode for sure. Abelard, which is probably going to be if we have time. And then uh, Cassia and Argenta are somewhere over there, I'm sure. And then we can finally move on from all this, I think. I think uh, our time spent here on the ship. I'm going <laughs> to just stare creepily at him again. Hey, brother. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> God, I got something in my throat today. Anyway. Oh, I didn't realize I clicked over there. Oh, I didn't know I did that. I want, I want to stare creepily at him. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, some interesting stuff. We did talk to uh, Adira a little bit, but she didn't have much to say, unfortunately. Uh, we talked to Abel who had a ton to say uh, with Pascal getting interjecting his thoughts there. And then we uh, talked to the computer and got some quests that we now have on these other planets, one of the or two of the three planets, which sucks because I think I'm going to Janus first, if I recall correctly, because I believe that is the one that is the food planet, which is what we need. So, um, <coughs> Yeah. Uh, next time we're going to be talking to Heinrich, probably see what he has to say about all this and then everyone else. And then we're gone. I'll see you in the next one.